It's just the row number, the note, which is in that case the C-4. C is the note, 4 is the octave. Uh, you also have the sample number, say 12. Samples are just a linear list. And then you have an effect. In this case, OA is the effect, which in this case would be, say, a volume slide. And then 4 is the parameter, which if I remember correctly in the olden days, that would be like volume slide down by an amount of 4. And then basically to play back, the thing just went tick, 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 processed each row, and, and there was your music. It's pretty awesome. You had lots of effects. You could set volumes. You could slide up and down, sample offset, pattern break. Um, and this one little interesting thing called arpeggiate, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll spend a moment talking about because it, arpeggiate is to play a chord really fast. So if you wanted to say have C, do, 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 arpeggiate would be this really freaking fast. And uh, it gave a very characteristic sound. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, it spawned what we now know as chip tune. And the chip tune was an evil beast that loved to arpeggiate and had a very characteristic video gamey sound. Here's some chip tunes. What you're hearing in the background, that sort of like bleeping, blipping song, is you know arpeggiation, where you play a lot of notes really fast. It sounded like a chord, and also allowed you to sort of use your limited number of channels to get a fuller sound without having the memory of actually having actual chord samples. Um, here's another chip tune. Unless they all kind of sound the same after a while. No offense to any of the uh, game board people in the house. It's almost like you could have a genre chip music. Well, I mean, it's already been covered. Uh, little girl from Ipanema. So, cute stuff, but uh, we don't want to stay in the past. Luckily, people can actually do uh, more realistic sounding stuff, even in four channels like the Amiga. For example, here's a little track from Dizzy. Using real guitar samples. Still a tiny mod, this is like a 200, 300k mod. 8-bit samples, low sample rate. Pretty good, and then uh, a dude named Yogi or Little Dog with this little jam featuring actual guitar strumming, harmonics, flutes. What? Yeah, it's a classic. And for the time, you know, people were amazed you could actually have this kind of music come out of a relatively early um, Amiga. But uh, then we had to evolve. And so came along the PC. Unfortunately, the PC didn't have that nifty sound chip that the Amiga had, and so it couldn't play back any samples and hardware, but it did have more CPU. This meant, theoretically, you were not constrained to any sort of cham channel limit, sample limit. It's whatever you could get the machine to do. Um, at the time, the state of the art was the horrible, horrible ad lib sound chip, which was based on every game in those days. FM synthesis, no samples. It was truly terrible. So people decided to uh, go ahead and track it to the PC. And, it, and when they did that, they said, why limit yourself to four channels? Especially when this thing came out. This would be the glorious Gravis ultrasound. In 1992, some dude said, hey, how about let's take a PC card that plays sounds in hardware, and let's target it towards demo sceners and give away like, you know, 5,000 copies of the card to demo scene parties and try to get this thing adopted. And it was pretty awesome. It could play up to 32 channels. 14 channels at full 44.1 CD sample rate. Um, and uh, it was instantly adopted into every single tracker of the time. Unfortunately, it never sold well because the gaming industry didn't want to adopt it. They were so tied to ad lib, they were so tied to FM, they'd have to rewrite all their music, all their composers, all the playback routines, um, and basically very few games ever sort of latched on in the thing of died an ignominious death. I'm sure one day these cards will go on eBay for a lot of money. I think, Jim, you've got, what, like 10 of them or something? Um, this, also led to some, some <laughs> this also led to some better formats. Uh, we got Screen Tracker 3 uh, from the famous Future Crew in 1993. This was a 16-channel tracker. Um, Fast Tracker 2, uh, similar kind of a program with actual 16-bit samples and mouse support. This is before the Windows days, really. Um, 
And then later on, we get things, more modern things like Impulse Tracker, which supported 64 channels. Virtual channels where you could actually cram multiple overlapping notes into a single channel, all just limited by how powerful your, your CPU was. And so with the PC came PC scene music. Um, and also, you saw some games actually start to use the tracker format for the first time. And I'm going to play you some PC examples. I had to listen to a wave, but... This will be a Purple Motion track from 1993. S3M, this will be, I think, 14 channel. Sort of just notice the increased density of the sounds, increased density of the amounts of the sample data. Um, and now I'll play a track from the uh, 1994 video game from Origin, Crusader No Regret, which I did um, some of the soundtrack for. Um, and this was one of the first games that supported 8 channel mods. The producer at the time was a big metal fan, and he insisted that every song have deaf guitars in it. It made me very sad. But, you know, sound quality wise, you know, it was much improved over the ad lib of the day. Skip ahead. Here's a S3M by Basshead from 95. Featuring even more sort of modern sound. Um, and then I'll do another one of my tracks. This is actually a 21 channel IT. We still only get one side? Hmm. All right, well. Oh, well. Just crank it up then. And pan it mono. So as you can kind of ooh. so as you can kind of hear, um, things started to get a whole lot more realistic, really fast. There are other games that used um, mods as well. Um, Star Control 2 back in 92. Malcolm of KLF did a whole bunch of mods for that. Those were four channel, I believe. Or were they six channel? Mm. Four. Unreal Tournament used mods, um, quite a few from different people. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Um, the CD-ROM appeared. People decided, oh, we can just stream Redbook. That, you know, that'll, that'll do it. This thing named DirectX came along. Oh, we can mix in software. You don't have to deal with sound card, from sound card APIs. Um, and then this little format called the MP3, which unfortunately negated a lot of the size advantage of the track files. You know, a 500K mod versus an average minute per meg MP3 all of a sudden isn't so impressive. So here we are 15 years later. This, this would be Cubase SX. Um, People enter, as you can see down here, this is a piano roll style interface, which is what most modern music composition programs um, use. You can actually manipulate samples directly, complicated mixing doodads, um, a professional like sort of jog shuttle. And you can ask yourself, well, why, why do people still would ever want to care about tracking? Well, as it turns out, there are some interesting things you can do in a tracker that you can't do in a program like this. And, Sort of the whole point of this talk is I'm going to show you a little bit in sort of live demonstration. Tracker, tracker files do have advantages. They're not just